Hey everyone, this is Grant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new OpenShift Eclipse plugin that will allow you to create, manage, and deploy applications to the OpenShift platform as a service. First thing we'll want to do is download Eclipse. So I went to eclipse.org, click on the download tab, choose the appropriate package. For this video, I'm just going to use the stock vanilla Eclipse ID for Java developers, and I'm going to grab the 64 bit version. Once the download has been completed, I'm going to open it up in my download directory. I'll extract the contents, and that will create an Eclipse program directory. I'll open that up, start the Eclipse application. It's going to ask me where I want to store my workspace. I'm just going to select the default. And Eclipse is up and running. At this point, we want to install the Eclipse OpenShift plugin. So in order to do that, I'll click on Help, Install New Software. I will add a new repository, JBoss Tools Update Site. Put in the JBoss URL. It's going to pull down a list of available packages to install. I'm going to expand the Cloud Deployment Tools and select the OpenShift Express Tools. At this point, it's going to download the appropriate plugin packages and it's also going to ask me to accept any license agreements. I will select to install the JBoss OpenShift Express tools by clicking the Next button, accept the agreement, click on Finish. Once the plugin has been installed, you will need to restart your Eclipse application. At this time, we should have the Eclipse plugin, Git, and OpenSSH all installed. So let's test it out. Let's create a new project. I'll select Other. We should have the OpenShift tab here. Sure enough, we do. So let's create an OpenShift Express application. First thing you'll want to do is authenticate with your OpenShift username and password. If you do not have one, you can go to OpenShift.com and create one, or click the hyperlink on this dialog. It's going to validate my user credentials, and then it's going to contact OpenShift via web services and pull back a list of all the available applications that I have. On this screen, you can do a couple of things. You can change your domain name or your namespace. You can view a list of all available applications that you have, as well as what cartridge they are currently using. You can create a new application, delete an application, or you can get details about an application. If I select the sample application and click on details, it's going to pull back the type, um, when the application was created, as well as my Git URL and the public URL for the application. I'm actually going to create a new application. So I'll click the new button. I will give my application a name, plug in. I will click the finish button. And once the application has been created, it is now displayed in my available applications. At this point, I actually want to get clone the repo that was just created for me. So as my application is highlighted, I'll click the Next button. And it's going to pull down the information for my OpenShift Git repository. If you have a local JBoss server installed, you can create a server adapter for your local runtime. I'm not going to do that in this demonstration as I'm going to push my code straight up to the OpenShift server. Also, the one thing we need to do is to create a SSH key on this machine. So I'll go into my SSH preferences. If you don't have a key already uh, created, you go to Key Management, Generate RSA Key, type in a password. I'll save my private key. Overwrite the one that's already there for me. And at this point, I can do one of two things. I can either cut and paste this into the OpenShift website Express Console, or the plugin will actually send this SSH key up to the OpenShift servers for me. To demonstrate how I would do it manually, I'll copy this. I will go back to my web browser, go to OpenShift.com, sign in. go to the Express tab and then start the Express console. Click on Edit under your SSH key. 
paste in your new key and click on to update your domain. Now that my SSH key has been saved, I'll go back to my IDE. I'll apply these changes and then I can click finish. It'll contact the OpenShift Git repository that was created and clone that repo. Enter in my passphrase that I created. And as you can see, my plugin source code has now been cloned to my local IDE. As you can see, this is a standard Maven project with a source main web app and a POM XML. Let's just make a quick change. Let's go to the Snoop JSP page. We'll add a exclamation point here so we can get a change to one of our source files. I will save that. I will then commit the change by right-clicking on my project, going down to Team, commit the change. And then I want to push that change up to my OpenShift server. So I'll push to upstream. Click OK. And at this point, my code has been committed and pushed to my upstream repository that does reside on my OpenShift Express application. If I want to look at my application and the change I made, in Safari, I'll go to my URL. on paths.rhcloud.com and we can see my application has been deployed. We actually modified the Snoop JSP so we'll look at that and sure enough the bang that we added has been deployed to the server. Thanks for watching this video. If you have more questions about OpenShift email us at openshift at redhat.com or join our forums. Thank you.